<clears throat> Isaiah chapter 18, 18th book in the Bible, Job. Woe, verse 17, burden. 18 is woe. And later on we'll see lamentation. Woe to the land shadowing with wings, which is beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. Now it's interesting, chapter 17, we looked at Damascus. Paul was going to Damascus. Chapter 18, there was an Ethiopian eunuch that got saved. The only thing interesting is the Ethiopian eunuch came first, then Paul. Sending ambassadors by the sea, even in vessels of bulrushes, that's very cheap, primitive vessels. I mean, that's not a, a, a ship that's going to run into major oceans and seas. I mean, even you get you, you look at the you know tribal boats they're hollowed out logs and they're not safe for open sea but they're good enough to go out offshore and fish bulrush is, is a plant upon the waters saying go ye swift messengers quick quick to go to a nation scattered and peeled, that means to be uh, stripped, robbed. You would take a, a fruit and you would peel off the peelings and you've taken the, the covering off the orange. To a people trump terrible from their beginning. So a, a group of people that's beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, not Ethiopia itself. And they're troubled and they're known to be terrible. We read, and it's not Sodom, it's we read about Sodom, but Genesis, the 1313 of Genesis 1818, it says that Solomon, uh, Solomon, Sodom, they were wicked sinners before the Lord. Now these people, they're terrible. From their beginnings hitherto. From the start of this people, they've been terrible. To present. A nation meted, measured, limited, out, and trodden down, run over. Horses, man, carts, whose land the rivers have spoiled. Somebody went in there, took all the resources of the river. Fish. Whose land the rivers have spoiled. All ye inhabitants of the world, okay, that's the world. You see, the Bible writes to the world. The Bible writes to the nation of Israel. The Bible writes to the Christian, the church. The Bible writes to the earth. Jeremiah, oh, earth, 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 the planet earth. And dwellers on the earth see when he lifted up an ensign, that's a flag, a banner, on the mountains. And when he bloweth the trumpet, hear ye. So there's this warning to this land, pay attention. There's a battle cry. For so the Lord said unto me. I will take my rest. Millennium. I will consider in my dwelling place like, like clear heat. It's a day just heat. It's hot. Upon herbs, which is needed for the herbs. And like a cloud of dew, it's refreshing water of the morning. In the heat of the harvest. Death. There's no help. The weather is not going to work towards you. <coughs> For a four in front, the harvest when the bud is perfect. And the sour grape is ripening in the flower. We read about those sour grapes. They're not good. And no pun intended, but they're not good. 
He shall both cut off the sprigs, little clippings, cuttings, small branches, small twigs, with pruning hooks, and take away and cut down the branches. He won't brace it up. He won't attend to it. And there is a pruning. But a pruning of judgment. They shall be left together unto the falls of the mountains. And it's a picture of Armageddon. We're going I'm going to clip I'm going to clip your plants. I'm going to clip your fruit. I'm going to clip your We're going to clip everything. I'm just going to throw it out on the ground and let the animals have it. Let the birds have it. This would be the corpse in the in the type of Armageddon, and the beasts of the earth. And a lot of times when we see, even when God speaks about Israel, I don't think He's talking about Israel here. But when He says, you know, for the fowls of the air and the beasts of the ground, that's a death usually of a multitude of people. There's no burial. You're just your dead bodies are in the ground. For the Jew, which I don't think this is for the Jewish, but if you didn't get a burial, listen, they even, I mean, the scripture said, but they even gave Jesus Christ, whom they hated. There were men who came to him and said, listen, can we have that body? We got to put it in the ground. And we don't have much time. We got to do as quickly as possible because the time's getting down. The Sabbath is coming. We got to hurry and put that body in the ground. The fall shall summer upon them. It's going to be so much. The fall is going to be, hey, it's going to be a whole season we can be fed. That picture is Armageddon. Ezekiel talks about there's going to be coming a time that there's going to be so many dead bodies in the land that they're going to say, people are going to get on a wagon train. Oh, wait a minute, stop. There's a, there's a bone over there. Give me one of them flags. Mark the bone. Mark that bone over there. And I think he says, I think he says six months, something like that. They're going to be, they're going to hire people for that period to, to bury the dead bone. All right, there's a bone, at least bury it. We're in an area where there's animals like lions that they will eat the bones. And all the beasts of the earth shall winter upon them. So the birds will have the summer. <laughs> What the birds leave behind, the rest of the beasts are going to come and devour. I mean, you think about we're down here in, in Florida, and every once in a while we'll be driving down the road and we see a whole bunch of, 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 of uh, why, is my, why does it leave my brain? Um, uh, vultures. There's a, there's a body had been hit by a car or, or you know, dead animal, and the vultures, a whole bunch of them gathering around. And then when those vultures are finished with what they want, leave anything behind, it will be for, you know, the, the foxes the, uh, and the other animals wild. And then you got the bugs, the ants, and those animals. Absolutely no burial. Okay. And in that time, another interesting phase, shall the present be brought unto the Lord. That's millennium. That's bringing something to Jesus Christ. Lord of hosts, of a people scattered and peeled, and from a people terrible from their beginning here too. So here's the people we're talking about. They're coming to be worshipped before Jesus Christ. They have not come to an literal complete end though there's been masses and multitudes killed there's still a redment from a people terrible from the beginning here too we read that in verse number two a nation meted out we read that in verse two trotted underfoot People walked over. We read that in verse 2. You would think verses 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and 6 without verse 7. You would think, wow, these people are wiped out. 
Don't even look for them. And yet when we come to the millennial kind of passage, here's these very same people. And to make sure you know the very same people, verse 2 is repeated. Whose land the, the rivers have spoiled. That is verse 2. Verse 2 tells us about this nation. <clears throat> 3, 4, and 5. And this tells us about the utter destruction. And verse 7 says, but wait. They're not finished. And it's not the Israel, it's not Israel the nation. Because Israel wasn't a people terrible from their beginning. The beginnings of Israel was Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. The only terrible one out of them would have been Jacob. And what waters would you say of them that people have spoiled? Abraham wasn't in by areas of water in the promised land except for wells of water. From their beginning, oh, the children of Israel wasn't in the promised land in the beginning. To say the Mediterranean, the, the Jordan, or the Salt Sea. To the place of the name of the Lord of hosts, the Mount Zion, and that's the millennium. And to put also, maybe a prophecy not only of, of tribulation passage and all that, may, if it's before the tribulation, Mount Zion, maybe to the, to the temple that Ezra will build. How about the temple that's in Rome that an Ethiopian eunuch went to visit? And you have Acts chapter 8. Would that be interesting? Would it be interesting that that Ethiopian eunuch who was a, a servant of uh, uh, Cadence, I think her name was. Would it be interesting if he, you know, we read about he has a scroll he's reading on the way home. Would it be interesting that he brought gifts maybe to the temple? As chapter 18 says. But chapter 18 fits to the book of Job and Job is 42 months. 42 chapters, a man has been, been plagued by a disease of the devil where God shows up with a whirlwind. There is tribulation and millennial passage in this, but let me of my own being of something you don't have to believe. What if it was that Ethiopian eunuch? And not only just him, but other people like him that went to the temple during the book of Acts to bring presents. And one of them gets saved on the way home. And I've been told by, I think, two or three Ethiopian missionaries that I've known. There, there is a foundational story of that Ethiopian eunuch. And one of them gave me a name, but which I couldn't remember. That he did go back into Ethiopia and he did go back in the region of Ethiopia and he preached and he taught about Jesus Christ that Phil told him. And when he carried back to Ethiopia, he brought Isaiah 53. We know that. Maybe, maybe, and don't hold me to it. And I may have to repent, but maybe Isaiah 18 is that man going going from Jerusalem back home with the with the gospel. Maybe others made pilgrimages to Mount Zion. But in the tribulation period, these people are going to come and bring presents to the Lord Jesus Christ Himself. I say it could be a big maybe. <laughs> 